Okay, so um, now that we've seen the basic idea of the Neiman Pearson lemma, um, I'd like to uh, take another look and see how we can use it to actually construct um, critical regions for, um, for accepting and rejecting our various um, simple hypotheses. So not only is it, a, um, is it a way that we can check if our region is most powerful, but it's also, um, it also gives us a procedure for not only finding the critical region, but finding a good test statistic that cuts that uh, critical region out. So let's um, just go ahead and take a look at an example. Um, so I'm gonna take a, um, an exponential population. So that is to say um, the, um, I'm going to assume that the um, probability density function is something like this, um, lambda to the minus lambda x, x being um, non-negative. And um, we'll have two hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is going to be the um, simple hypothesis that lambda is 5, and the uh, alternative hypothesis that um, lambda is equal to, uh, to 8. Okay. So... Um, We'll imagine that our sample size uh, consists of uh, 10 samples from this population, and we're interested in a critical region of size um, 0.001. So we want um, the probability of a type 1 error um, to, be, um, to be this alpha to be uh, 0 0.001. And we're going to try to find the most powerful critical region that makes that um, happen. But moreover, we don't even know at the outset what statistic we should use um, and, and much less what inequality we should make on it. Okay, so um, just to uh, fix ideas here, you know, we have this general form for our, uh, for our density function, but of course the PDF um, assuming H0 is, um, is, I don't know, we could call like F tilde for null hypothesis zero. Um, and, um, you know, it looks like 5e e to the minus 5x. Actually, let me be a little bit more clear and say that, um, that these are my individual samples that I'm looking at. So x1 through x10 are my various um, samples. And in, under the um, alternative hypothesis, um, these um, density functions look like e to the minus 8xi. All right, and that's under uh, h0, and this is under h1. And um, so the um, Neiman-Pearson uh, lemma tells us that we should look at our ratios of this sort, like say um, f0 tilde over f1 tilde, um, depending on, um, I think I probably am writing this upside down from how I wrote it before. Um, these are all non-negative functions, though it's not that big a deal. And I'm uh, going to look at this being, um, so if I write it this way, I want this to be greater or equal to some k for, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what, what am I writing here? I should actually not write these individual xi's, but the joint density function, right, for the, for the Neiman Pearson lemma. So the joint uh, density function is going to be some, let's say, f0 of um, x1 through, um, through uh, x10, but which I'm going to just write as, uh, as a shorthand, just f of x, where x uh, is just this vector. And um, what is it? It's, you know, these are independent, identically distributed, um, you know, uh, exponential variables. So it's the product of these um, individual density functions. So it's 5 to the 10th. Uh, multiply these exponential guys. The exponents add. So I'm going to get a sum of the xi's. And this is uh, this thing, um, this joint density function here that I'm going to be using. On the other hand, um, under the alternative hypothesis, my joint density function looks like the same thing with the 8s. Okay, I'm sorry. And then for the um, for setting up the uh, Neiman Pearson lemma, uh, I'm going to look at the ratio of these two guys. And what I would like to say is that this thing should be bigger than some value for um, all my guys inside my critical region and less than or equal to that same value for x um, not inside the uh, critical region. Okay, I'm going to look for some value. Uh, K that uh, has that property, or that that's what would uh, that's what would give me our, our region. Um, I, I mean, I'm on a K and a C, right? So I'm trying to solve for both the K and the C, so to speak. Okay. Um, 
although it's not so important to solve for the k itself it's really just the c that we're interested in okay anyways um if i if i look at the these equations so for example this um this first one uh if i were to write that out so you know here's the f0 it's this thing the f1 is this thing over there and when i look at that actual ratio what am i talking about i'm looking at um five eighths to the power of ten um the difference of what's inside those exponentials subtracting the eight gives me a positive three from that five so i get three some of the xi's i want to say that this thing is at least k um for my um for x in the critical region um and so how do i solve that well you know i just multiply by eight fifths the tenth on both sides take the logarithm divide by three um, and, uh, and then I'll get an expression in terms of this uh, sum of xi, so I get an easier thing to look at. So this is the sum of the xi's is um, what is at least one third of the of um, one third of the uh, logarithm of eight fifths uh, to the tenth power uh, times k. Yeah. So maybe I'll just call that thing capital K. It's just some other constant um, for this is for X and C. And if we did the same thing on the other side, we get that the sum of the X size is going to be less than or equal to the same capital K for X naught and C. All right. Um, OK, so that gives us um, suddenly we have a good test statistic. So a good test statistic to cut out our critical region that we haven't yet found is going to be, um, I don't know, we call it uh, theta being um, the sum of the xi's, uh, otherwise known as n times the uh, sample mean. Of course, n is 10. So. so our statistic is more or less the sample mean or the sum of the, or 10 times the sample mean. That's going to be a nice, uh, nice thing to look at. And our, um, and our critical region is going to have the form of um, it's going to be determined by the sum of the xi's being um, at least um, some value uh, k. So now the question is, um, what uh, should I make k to make the critical region um, what I what I want it to be? What do I want? I want that the probability that um, that my um, that my statistic, you know, um, is greater than or equal to k. So this is, in other words, the probability that you know, x1 through x10, that point, is in the critical region. I want this to be um, alpha, and so I just need to solve for some k. And alpha is given, right? It's 0.001. So I just need to uh, solve for some k that makes that uh, true. The point is here, I know what the sum of the xi's are. Um, oh, uh, sorry, we want this probability to be this, you know, assuming the uh, null hypothesis. So we should stick that in there, right? So it's this assuming the null hypothesis. So the point being, like, if we assume the null hypothesis, then we have a particular distribution given for all these xi's. We have a particular distribution given for the sum of the xi's. We know these random variables. And we can um, calculate these, this, um, this k to make that probability work as we would like. So just very explicitly, um, each of these xi's is an exponential variable. And as you might recall, an exponential variable is a special case of a gamma variable um, with um, shape parameter uh, equal to 1. So. Um, Remember, a gamma variable is described by uh, two different parameters whose name depends on the textbook or a person that you're talking to or reading or reading or talking to. Um, and, um, and in this case, uh, if we're using this lambda over here, then in the gamma side, the lambda uh, corresponds to the so-called rate parameter. Um, you know, alternately, you might see 1 over lambda is the so-called scale parameter. So depending on the equation that you look at, it might be in terms of um, this kind of the rate or 1 over the rate, which is the scale. Uh, in any case, um, the, the salient feature about these um, exponential uh, random variables or these, excuse me, about these gamma random variables 
is that you um, if you take a sum of gamma variables with the um, with the same rate parameter then you get another gamma variable and the alphas add um, so if, if you uh, you might recall the moment generating function for a um, for a gamma variable um, with um, with uh, rate lambda and shape alpha looks like one over t to the lambda to the minus alpha um, and so you can see you know when you add independent variables um, then you're multiplying the moment generating functions if they have the same lambda then the alpha is just add right so this is just to remind you of, of that of that fact um, and therefore in particular if I look at the sum of these xi's I'm adding 10 um, I'm adding uh, 10 gamma variables together with alpha equal 1, I get a gamma variable with alpha equals 10. So this is a gamma with um, rate um, lambda, which for us is 5, so we're under, we're under the null hypothesis here, right? Um, and with um, shape alpha equals um, 10. All right. And so... Um, so then we can we're looking for um, solving this probability that our sum of these xi's um, is at least k given lambda equals five to be 0 0.001. We're wondering what is this um, k have to be? This is kind of the capital k that we had before. And um, so in other words, we're kind of um, you know if we if we think about like let's say f of the sum of the xi's is the uh, cumulative um, density function we're wondering um, we want to find a, a k um, such that the cumulative density up to k is equal to 0 0.999 right that's that's really what we're saying um, and you know well uh, of course I don't have that off the top of my head but um, but we have software that does so you stick this into um, for example R in R it would be the uh, Q uh, gamma function um, so this is the inverse um, cumulative distribution function for the gamma function and I'd stick in um, 0.999 um, for, the, uh, for the value I'm actually looking at and then you put in the shape and the uh, rate and um, and what it will tell you is uh, uh, 4.53 dot 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 and so we are done the test is given by um, our critical region defined by the sum of the xi's being at least uh, 4.53 what do we find we find that um, you know so in other words if we're in the crit if we're in here excuse me if we're in that region um, then we um, reject the null hypothesis and we accept h1 otherwise we accept our null hypothesis so if um, if the sum of the x size is less than that we accept the null hypothesis if more than that we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis and um, and what have we just found we found that this gives a most powerful test um, for that um, and there we go so that's that's uh, that's how to use this lemma